Hey guys, Mr. B here again, bringing you another uh, wicked awesome math video. Um, this one is another related rates question, and this is a different type of the ones that we've been doing. So not quite as obvious as the ones that we've done before. Um, so uh, hopefully we can sort of get through this. These aren't that difficult, but still they're a little bit different than the ones that we've done before. And you can probably hear the baby screaming in the background again. Uh, my sincere apologies. So we got a northbound ship leaves the harbor at 12 noon with a speed of 7.5 knots. So remember, speed is a rate of change. So let's kind of draw this picture as it goes. So here's that ship. It's going north. And that's 7.5 knots. So knots is just like the nautical term for speed. So that is, let's call it dy over dt. So the reason why I call it y is because it's going up north. And that's 7.5 knots. All right, and then it says a westbound ship leaves the same harbor at 2 p.m. with a speed of 8 knots. So they're giving us times for a reason, and we'll talk about that now in a second. So we'll call that x, so called dx over dt. And that's 8 knots. And then just give me a second to pause this video, see what's up with the baby. All right, we good. So yeah, I'll label this guy as eight knots. And then, so you see what's happening, we get this little triangle here. And it says, how fast are the ships separating at 4 p.m.? So we'll talk about what that time means in a second. But this is the separation between them, which is the hypotenuse of the triangle, which I'm going to call R. And then I'll call it dr over dt. So you call it what you want. If you want to use A, B, and C, you can. Uh, you guys know I'm not a fan of that. Um, but uh, I always use R or H. So either one, whatever one you like to use. So... We got a lot happening here. So we know the formula that we're going to use with this um, equation. So it's x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So the problem that we have with this is that all these things are changing. So there's nothing fixed I can sub into this equation. Like when we did that first Pythagorean question with the ladder, the ladder was a fixed distance. So I could sub the 6 in here, and then immediately my question got easier because I only had x and y. But now I have x and y and r. So I am given some other information, and that other information is the times. All right? So for those of you, you should all know this formula because you sort of use it throughout your math courses. But also, if you've done physics, which a lot of you guys do, you should know this formula. And distance is equal to uh, V times T. So the speed times the time. So I can figure out um, how far these ships have traveled in the time that we have. So I'll call one DX, which is my distance in the X direction. So that's the 7.5 knots. And then I'll call the other one DY. All right, and you'll see how this helps us out in a second when we actually do the derivative. So it's just the velocity, 7.5, times my time. So if you look at, we go from the first ship leaves at 12, and then we're looking at 4 p.m. when the ships are separating. So that's four hours later, so I put a four in here, and then I would get that um, number, so 7.5 times 4, and that's 30. And then we do the 8 knots, which is the x. Oh, I got that backwards. That one is the, I know you're like shouting at the screen now. This one is the y. And then this one is the x. My sincere apologies. How dare I let my calculus class down like that. And then we get, that one's two hours because it's from two to four. And then so it's eight times two, which is 16. So those are my distances. Now the other thing I can actually do 
is find my hypotenuse distance as well, and we'll need that number. So that's just using Pythagorean theorem that I already have here to be able to find my R value. So it's just going to be 30 squared plus 16 squared, which is 30 squared plus 16 squared, which is actually works out really nicely to exactly 34. All right, so we got these three distances. So we have X, Y, and R. And you'll see why we need those values in a second. Maybe scratching your head, why are we calculating this? Well, we'll see now. So we're basically trying to knock as much stuff out of this equation as we can. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of this Pythagorean theorem, and I'll just do that over here. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. And remember, we always do dx over dt, which I know is 8. And you can see now immediately why I want x. x is 30. Sorry, I messed it up again. That's a y. That's an x. Um, so I immediately know my x is 16, so we're good. And then the derivative of y squared is 2y dy over dt. And my derivative of r squared is 2r dr over dt. So with every Pythagorean theorem question like this where all three are changing, there's a lot of variables, six in total, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you need five pieces of information with one missing. So there's our five piece of information right here, and there's the one missing one, dr over dt. So now I can basically just fill everything in. So I got my x is 16. My dx over dt is 8. And then my y is 30. I got that right this time. And my dy over dt is 7.5. Did I press play? Okay, yeah, I did. All good. And then 2r, so 234. And then that's my dr over dt. So this is not a great example of a non-calculator question, as you can imagine. You wouldn't want to be doing this um, necessarily. But I'm just going to do the entire left-hand side of my calculator. If I can see here, I'm in the complete there. Um, 7.5. So I should put that entire thing in my calculator, so the entire left-hand side. And that's 706. And then I'll multiply those two things together, so that's 68 dr of dt, and then I'll divide both sides by 68, and that's 706 divided by 68, which is 10.4, and again guys, no sig figs or anything in this, none of that nonsense in, in calculus, um, so 10.4, and since that's dr over dt, so the units we use for this is knots. So knots is assumed to be a speed, so it has a time component of it. I don't know exactly what a knot is. I'm not a, you can ask Jack, he might know. He knows all about boats. Um, so 10.4 knots. So that is a great example of another type of related rate. And there's a couple more that you can try in your notes now on your own. And like I said, if there's any questions when I get back, we'll sort it all out. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you soon.